All right, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you back. And final segment, a little gimme five for you. It was very, very interesting to see Sean Spicer of the RNC on Reliable Sources on CNN yesterday uh, going at it with uh, the host of Reliable Sources, Brian Stelter. And, you know, Stelter is someone who has come out and unabashedly said he's proud of journalists who are, you know, going after Trump uh, because uh, they are defending democracy. Well, you know, it's nice to have your opinion, but journalists really aren't supposed to have an opinion. Now are they? Uh, nonetheless, uh, it uh, was uh, pretty interesting, and here's how it went. There's no question I think we're, we're trailing behind, but I think that we've got the wind in our back heading into the final two weeks. Uh, the momentum's with Trump, the enthusiasm's with Trump, and I think that's what's going to propel us to victory in November. Where do you see signs of that, of the momentum? Oh, North Carolina and Florida in particular. If you look at the returns in Florida, we're up in terms of absentee ballot and absentee ballot returns by 2%. We're up over 9% in North Carolina. When you look at where we were four years ago in terms of early vote, we're up 20,000 more than we were in Iowa. We're up 40,000 in Ohio. We're up in Nevada in terms of where we were historically four years ago. All right, so that's a good scene setter, if you will. And that's interesting, too, considering uh, the media would have you believe uh, otherwise. And what was really interesting is that Stelter let him say all that without interrupting him. I was shocked that he let him say all that uh, uninterrupted. And then it got into, you know, the biased coverage. For viewers at home, it's what, what goes on and what has been going on in the media is, frankly, a disservice and in, in many cases just, frankly, appalling how it's in been covered. Ways? As you pointed out, it, hold on, because I think at the beginning you pointed out most of the reporters, uh, if you look at their Twitter feeds, they have become unbelievable activists against Trump. They may not like him, but the degree to which they're helping Hillary is unbelievable. Look at the Twitter feeds of most of these journalists, whether it's the New York Times or Politico. Look at some of the revelations that have come out over the last couple of weeks that, that have come through these leaked emails in terms of the collusion that has gone on in some of these reporters where they're cheering on Hillary Clinton or they're providing them copies of their story to edit or to review. It is unbelievable. I mean, when you listen to it, when you know, I, I say it so often, but when you hear another person say it, uh, especially the, uh, uh, the, the, the man uh, the, with the stature of, a sh of, of, of Sean there with the RNC, uh, it, it's just mind-boggling, mind-boggling that in a presidential race, New York Times, Politico, writers sending their stories and their quotes to Hillary and, and to Podesta and saying, is it okay? Are, are you, is, am I, is it, did I do okay by you? Is it all right? I mean, it's, it's, you would think that a reliable sources host would be outraged at that. Instead, like I said in the past, commenting on the whole media coverage in general, he said he's proud of what journalists are doing because they're, they're saving democracy. So he's in the tank, too. Or he has a very warped uh, opinion of journalism. Uh, next. And then the idea that, that folks well, in the media go, oh, you're just I, playing the refs. That's not playing the refs. That's, at, that's calling, calling out fouls. That's calling strikes mm -hmm. and balls. When, when people in the media who are supposed to be reporting the facts start becoming activists for a particular candidate, that deserves to be called out. You look at, at, at panels that get put on different networks. It's one anti-Trump person after another, you know, and they put on a Republican, but they're against Trump, and so they call it a balanced panel. When was the last time a panel had a Democrat that wasn't for Hillary? on it. I haven't seen one this cycle. That is a very interesting point. CNN is especially guilty for the most part. Oh, they'll have panels stacked, you know, four people on this side, four people on this side, and two of them total uh, are Trump supporters. And if you include the host, that's another Clinton supporter. So they're severely outnumbered. But very, very interesting point. Can't you, you keep putting on Republican after Republican who, who's not supporting Trump. Can't you find a Democrat? Not only CNN, the whole media. Can't you find a Democrat who's not supporting Hillary and put that person on and let them tell you why? Now, Seltzer kind of takes exception to what Sean Spicer just said. There's the a lot more unity in the Democratic Party than there of, is in the Republican Party, though. There are a lot of anti-Trump Republicans. There's a lot of, but I, I, I bumped into plenty of, of Bernie Sanders supporters, millennials, minorities, who are lifelong Democrats that aren't going to vote for Hillary Clinton, yet we never hear or see about them. Every story and That's every a false panel that exists on cable I mean, television. It's a false equivalency? How's that a false equivalency? I mean, that's ridiculous. 
I, I don't see how it's a false equivalency. Spicer is saying you put on Republicans who are, uh, you know, anti-Trump, go find a Democrat who's anti-Hillary. How is it a false equivalency to be asking for that or to be noting that Sanders supporters, millennials, African-Americans, Hispanics, they're out there. And therefore, Trump, you could find them. I could find them. Anyway, um, so we move on. You sent me some friendly emails like, happy birthday, how are you, uh, good job. But I don't get debate questions. I haven't gotten into edit, you know, stories from, from folks. I mean, again, you look at the, there's a difference between a friendly email and collusion. Uh, so yeah, the I people hope are saying collusion by civil, a but I don't. Examples, they're picking and choosing a few examples of, of stupid journalists. But I don't have a few examples. claiming it's a conspiracy. No, I, but I think, again, look at, there's, there's several, look at the amount of time that you guys give Evan McMullen and, and Gary Johnson versus Jill Stein. Jill Stein's mm. been non-existent, and she's still at 5 and 6%. You guys don't want to cover people on the left the way you do on the right. Right. Now, now it's very interesting. A couple of stupid examples of journalists uh, referring, what, the New York Times with the quotes to Hillary and, and uh, Glenn Thrush to, uh, to uh, John Podesta saying, I'm a hack. I hope I didn't ask, you know, mess up your story. It's not just a few examples. There's a lots of examples. If this was taking place the other way around, oh, my God. But, and you know what? None of these journalists have suffered repercussions. None of the ones who have been caught have suffered any repercussions. All right, one more quickie here from this debate. You boost up the opponents. You put on people on panels. You, you know, no one's asked NBC, how did that access Hollywood tape that only NBC had had copies of it? How did that actually get out? Has anybody asked NBC that? Has anybody oh, Sean, asked you know we've all been asking. Not... We've been begging for information about that. You know that. <laughs> Where's the story, Brian? Where is the story? Where is the story? De every time that Donald Trump makes a comment, every Republican up and down the ballot, including here at the RNC, is asked to comment on Donald Trump's thing. When was the last time someone was asked on the record to comment about Hillary Clinton's disclosures, whether it was how she handled classified hmm. information, whether or not that they believe she's fit to serve because of how she handled classified information. When was the question about wh how risky she is as a candidate? And Brian's like, hmm, good question. Yeah. Hey, hey, every Democratic politician you have on and every Hillary supporter you have on, you should be asking, do you agree with what uh, was said in the emails about Catholics? Do you denounce what was said in the email about Catholics? Hillary won't denounce it. Maybe those around her will denounce it, but they don't even ask. They don't even ask. All right.